Uh, our next speaker um, is, uh, her name is uh, Nazanin Ashwin Jam, and uh, she's a human, uh, international human rights activist, a singer, songwriter, an actor, a former Miss World Canada, and Miss World first runner-up. She's unbelievable. Uh, She's winner of uh, several human rights awards, and she's the co-founder of Stop Child Executions to Halt the Practice in Iran and a handful of other countries where it still continues. Um, the talented Ashman Jam is also the co-author of The Tale of Two Nazanines, and she's released a multilingual album called Someday, which is charted here in Canada, the US, and Europe. And she was appointed to the board of Canadian Race Relations Foundation to help em eliminate racism and discrimination in Canada. And in 2012, uh, Nazanin married the Honorable Peter McKay, who's Canada's, min I can't even read this part because I'm like, it's making me upset. I mean, look at, like, come on, really? <clears throat> so she married uh, our Minister of National, I should actually shut up because like, He's a minister of national defense. I can have lasers on my face. Like, uh, and they're uh, expecting their first child this year. And this is the part where I go weep in the green room. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Nazanin Ashvin Jam. Thanks, Cabby. You better watch out for those lasers. They're come, gonna come and get you. <laughs> It's a real pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you very much, National Speakers Bureau, for inviting me to speak about my life journey, where I was born, and my commitment to try to be a voice for the voiceless and help those most vulnerable in the world. I was born in Iran in 1979 at the start of the revolution, which I say spiraled my country back into the Middle Ages and put to shame what Cyrus the Great built 2,500 years ago. Cyrus the Great was the founding father of the Persian Empire, and he advocated for a lot of things well before his time, including abolishing slavery and crafting the very first human rights charter the world has ever known. In fact, this Cyrus cylinder hangs, a copy of it hangs in the United Nations today in New York. And so that's why I think it's so ironic that in the past 33 years, Iran has been one of the worst violators of human rights on the planet. Before 1979, Iran was ruled by a monarchy, and people were fed up with the Shah's rule, the Savak, uh, the human rights abuses that were taking place under the Savak, and wanted democratic reform. They wanted change. Now, there was an Iranian Islamic cleric by the name of Ayatollah Khomeini, who was living in exile at the time. And he promised the people of Iran that he would come, bring freedom to the people, and then step aside from politics. But that's not what happened. He came, he stayed, and introduced very strict form of Sharia law. And the democracy that people so fervently wanted turned into an instant theocracy. And since that time, there's been grave human rights abuses in Iran. Freedom of expression has been curtailed with the shutting down of newspapers, media, TV, radio stations. Anybody that was saying anything remotely anti-regime was faced with either imprisonment, torture, or execution. There's even three Iranian Canadians right now in Iran imprisoned. One that has a 19 and a half year prison sentence and two that are facing the death penalty simply because they've upset this regime. 